everyone. Thank you for joining me and the entire Google Cloud team today. And a special welcome for what's next for security professionals. My name is Sunil Pody, and I'm the VP and General Manager for Google Cloud Security. As many of you know, organizations large and small are realizing that digital transformation and the changing threat landscape requires a ground up security transformation. Attackers' tactics, techniques, and procedures have evolved as their targets have shifted and their desired outcomes have changed. So long gone are the days of a limited number of malicious nation state actors only targeting specific governments or critical infrastructure. These days, new normal is persistent attacks and off-the-shelf attack tooling leveraged by sophisticated threat actor gangs and nation states. And these folks are primarily focused on financial gain and business disruption across the mainstream enterprise, from the mid-market credit union bank to a very large enterprise in the Fortune 500. And to tell us more directly from the front lines, I would like to welcome Sandra Joyce, Mandian's EVP of Intelligence and Government Affairs. And it's my great honor to introduce her and the entire Mandian family into Google uh, since the recent acquisition. Sandra? Thank you, Sunil, and greetings to our audience at Google Next. As a new member of Google Cloud family, Mandian brings expertise in threat intelligence and consulting to double down on Google's commitment to security. At Mandian Threat Intelligence, we're always vigilant, tracking threat actors across the cyber domain as they seek to spy, steal, and sabotage the networks of organizations around the world. While cyber attacks used to play out completely behind closed doors, the threat has changed. And we're seeing an enormous amount of activity in full public view. State and criminal adversaries aren't just quietly hacking victims, they're creating public spectacles, which are designed to undermine the credibility of institutions and companies. Despite rumors to the contrary, ransomware is not dead. Those actors are still going strong, but the nature of their activity is always changing. Criminals simply need to find some way, any way, to compel victims to pay. These actors know they're undermining the businesses they target and they will not just stop at leaks. We've seen these criminals reach out to partners or customers or even to the media to garner interest in the leak and create public pressure for the victim. Unfortunately, many businesses find themselves in the impossible position of having to make a decision about preserving their data and, or acquiescing to threat actors. Nation state actors are playing a very similar game. A recent major attack on Albania included network disruption and leaked information similar to what you might see in many criminal cases. These governments are taking a page out of the cyber criminal playbook. But not all cyber activities are as straightforward. Information operations seek to target the hearts and minds of their audience, and threat actors use the cyber domain to carry out these types of campaigns. The information operations we see are designed to attack institutions like governments, alliances, or even democracy itself. We're now even seeing these nation states use information operations to target competing companies. For instance, an information operations we call Dragon Bridge has been posting on social media as residents living near a mineral processing facility. These fabricated online personas complain about the facility in order to stop competition of their country's activities. They use influence operations to bolster their country's market share while attacking competitors with influence operations. There are a lot of things driving threat actors to their targets. Some victims are targets of opportunity that are compromised by actors. Our supply chain has already proven to be an effective means of gaining access to downstream victims, and aggregated access has been abused by both criminals and nation states to great effect. APT29 is targeting technology companies to gain access to their customers. In Ukraine, broad access has been abused to great effect in a destructive attack. What kind of big data might interest an adversary? Data that might be used to track people, for instance. We've seen threat actors compromise hospitality, airlines, and other travel resources to track people of interest. APT39, one threat actor that we track, has a history of targeting people directly with spear phishing attempts, but they also target organizations with data on their victims, a potentially more fruitful and efficient means of doing business. Another threat actor, APT42, targets dissidents, activists, journalists, and academics who are critical of that country's activities. It is our mission to ensure that these activities are called out 
and provide defenders the tools and intelligence that they need to detect, block, prioritize, and respond to threats. Mannion and Google Cloud share a strong commitment to security and will work together to keep our customers, defenders, and the entire global community safe. Back to you, Sunil. Thank you so much. Thanks, Sandra. I'm so excited that you and the Mandian team, alongside the Threat Intel team, are joining Google Cloud. Now, as many of you know, Mandian clearly shares our mission to reinvent how enterprises detect and respond to threats and incidents. Mandian's products, services, and expertise will all combine to enhance our Google Cloud security portfolio and amplify our joint mission to keep customers safe. Now, here at Google Cloud, we continue to champion invisible security to help you move from today's reality, where security is bolted on as an afterthought, to a future where cloud security is engineered in, operations are simplified, and shared responsibility evolves to a model of shared fate, where the cloud provider has true skin in the game. Now, you might be asking why invisible security now? As you heard from Sandra, mitigating advanced and persistent threats can be difficult for enterprises if they don't have the resources, the talent, or the security engineering capabilities of a Google or a handful of other cutting edge organizations is ultimately what keeps some of these uh, you know, actors at bay. So that begets the question, are these mainstream enterprises, can they ever be protected unless they can be like Google? And imagine if enterprises of all sizes could re-platform on the same cloud, use the same tools, and use the same best practices that protect Google. That's essentially what we're doing with Google Cloud. And so first, we are helping enterprises become Google by providing the industry's most trusted cloud. And at the same time, knowing that most enterprises will take a, a while before they fully adopt cloud, we are bringing the best of Google to enterprises with security solutions for your on-prem, private, or multi-cloud environments. And we are helping organizations address these top-of-mind security initiatives across a variety of dimensions, starting with cloud governance and digital sovereignty. Now, as most of you know, digital sovereignty has become top of mind for many of you internationally. Governance and sovereignty are global issues with regulations and many unique compliance requirements across a wide set of regions. So the core of Google's and Google Cloud's approach is putting our sovereign controls in your hands. So this goes above and beyond data location and protection from external access. It includes predefined residency controls as well as assured workloads. And as most of you know, we have been focused on strengthening our sovereign cloud with trusted partnerships. And in addition to T-Systems for Germany, we have now embarked on deep and strategic alliances with Thales for France, Telecom Italia for Italy, and went side for Spain, and with many more to come. So now while sovereignty is key, managing and understanding cloud posture and risk is essential to a wholesome experience in cloud. Now we help teams understand their Google Cloud security posture and risk profile by incorporating world-class innovations, starting with Forsady, a recent groundbreaking technology and an acquisition into Security Command Center. With this new addition, you can now fully understand your attack posture. You can prioritize, contextualize vulnerability findings. And, but that's not all, because you can now step ahead. And with Forsyte built into SCC, it allows us to provide advanced attack path simulations so you can apply targeted actions before attackers can take advantage of high-risk vulnerabilities. So in addition to governance and cloud risk management on GCP, Another area that needs to be reimagined by the CISO and the entire security team is security all operations all up across all your environments, cloud and on-premise. And on this journey, instead of having siloed SIM and SOAR and Threat Intel solutions, our new Google Cloud security operations solution converges security operations capabilities so that security teams can now pivot faster and manage alerts more effectively between Chronicle, SIM, SOAR, and our best-in-class Threat Intel. And with the addition of Mandian's leading in incident response services, in-depth threat intelligence gained from the front lines, and Mandian's advantage platform, all of these will collectively help us accelerate your security operations transformation. This combined approach will help organizations move from not just modernizing security operations to 
a state of proactive cyber defense, which ultimately we believe is the future of security operations. And now to tell us more about how leading organizations are transforming security, it's my great pleasure to welcome my friend and a great partner and a customer, Bashar from Schwab. Over to you, Bashar. Thank you, Sunil. Transforming security for me is all about how security can be a business enabler while making sure the team embraces change and leverages all the latest cloud native security controls available to us. To transform our security program, we are really focused on three key areas. Security transformation to support business growth, zero trust by default, and threat detection and response going cloud native. Now let's dig a little bit deeper on securing our cloud transformation. For my team and I, our what isn't really changing. In other words, we aren't taking more risk just because we are embracing the cloud. And our risk appetite has largely stayed the same. But what has changed is the how. Now, what does that mean to us? It means that just because we used to do things a certain way, mostly in legacy data centers, doesn't mean we should do them the same way in the cloud. Yes, we need to stay true to our risk appetite, but we also need to use this as an opportunity to innovate, to champion, and embrace change, to do things differently, if and where it makes sense. To use the power of hyperscale cloud infrastructure, cloud native controls, and AI and machine learning to achieve greater automation, I want to use machines to reduce my team's toil and enable faster decision making based on data sets we weren't even able to analyze previously due to scale and various constraints. Now, as I mentioned, our second key focus area is all about embracing zero trust architecture at scale. For us, that means putting identity at the center of all decisions and removing implicit trust relationships. We focus instead on establishing an explicit trust for each transaction. Contacts and visibility are the other dimensions that are crucial to a successful implementation of zero trust, in my opinion. So how do we make sure we have visibility and contacts from as many sources and signals as possible to dynamically and continually assess access policies on the fly? How do we make sure that works where our teams are, where these days is not likely in the office. Ultimately, zero trust is all about linking identity and access to prevention strategy. But realistically, it dovetails into our third key focus area, which is rethinking threat, incident detection, and response. For me, scalable visibility is the foundation to modernizing threat detection and response, especially in a world where our data sources continue to grow exponentially. The only way to process all of that security into contextual data and actually make it useful is to embrace cloud native technologies to ensure scale and speed. Scale is super important to us. It ultimately enables us to use advanced analytics to make better and faster decisions. There's also the harsh reality of security talent availability in our industry today. My belief is that we need to leverage machines to do more, to help us see more, and to make decisions on our behalf where it makes sense. That being said, people and expertise will continue to be important, even if they are outside of your direct organization. That's why choosing the right security partner is key, especially in the context of security transformation. Make sure you choose partners based on a shared vision of the outcomes you want to achieve together. The last thing I want to leave you with is that make sure your team doesn't get hung up on previous security patterns. Push them to embrace change and innovate using all the latest tools at your disposal. And with that, Sunil, thank you for having me and back to you. Thanks, Bashar. Bringing the best zero trust access for users to apps and apps to apps is top of mind for many of you. So if you've made significant investments in our Beyond Corp lands, alongside strategic partners such as Palo Alto and a variety of other partners in the ecosystem. This now gives you comprehensive zero trust options to secure private and SaaS app access while mitigating internet threats across managed or unmanaged devices. However, 
successfully adopting a zero trust security architecture isn't always easy. So to help, we have packaged our proven experience and best practices with our cybersecurity action team and select partners. With this, we are, they are available to support anything from exploratory zero trust conversations to architecture reviews to implementation support. So now we know implicit trust that we've covered so far can create you know, an opportunity for insider threat management and other significant security risks, not only in the context of access, but also the software supply chain. In my mind, that's the last green space of potential opportunity to, to be really reimagined within an enterprise security posture. And to further help enterprises secure software supply chains, we're introducing an all new offering called Software Delivery Shield. Software Delivery Shield takes this complex challenge with a tested approach based on best practices that we use internally and to secure our own software supply chains for 100,000 plus developers here. And so to double click on a specific area, we have made significant progress on assured open source software. Very excited to announce the preview for assured open source that now provides access to the same open source software packages that Google depends on, allowing you to benefit directly from Google's own in-depth end-to-end OSS best practices. So in addition to everything I just covered, we are also releasing a wide variety of innovations across our entire security portfolio. To hear more about them or to learn from others, join our breakout sessions to go deeper into the topics as well as engage forward looking beyond Cloud Next. Now we are so excited to help you become like Google with our most trusted cloud and by bringing security magic to you wherever you are as our two fundamental pillars of cloud security here at Google. And one thing I wanted to highlight was that in this journey of modernizing security, either on GCP or wherever you are, unlike some of our peers, we are chosen to actually offer best-in-class partner capabilities in conjunction with first-party Google solutions in a cohesive experience versus an all-or-nothing capability. So in closing, you may recognize that the pace of innovation on this path to invisible security has not slowed down. In fact, if anything, it has continued to accelerate, especially with Mandiant now in the mix. So I hope you'll join us and our partners on this journey as we reinvent security to meet the requirements of tomorrow. Thanks again, stay secure, and have a great rest of next. Thank you.